for sure. That'll be the opening clip. Oh, I really don't care. Let's fucking say it. <laughs> Whitney just had the hot tour girl on, uh -huh. and they called Matt Wright. She's girl. actually crushing her 15 minutes, though. Like, she's an American hero. She said she's spit on a dick, and they're bringing her up on concerts like she's a cancer <laughs> kid. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> Have you ever seen the video where the guy shows uh, Lady Boys uh, American trans men and they're like, oh, it's like they're not even trying. <laughs> like a sprinter today that was all over X, full package on display, ran as a man until 45, is now like 50 something, decided to run as a woman. Can you imagine trying to hide a cock in the Special Olympics? Not even trying, no, you can see it. But I think we need to bring back the Italian mob as I've said many times. And tell all your other queer friends. <laughs> They can do whatever they want at the bars. <laughs> the elementary school's <laughs> off limits. Well, on this special episode... Was that on camera? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll just, we'll just that. we're going to keep that for sure. <laughs> That'll be the opening <laughs> clip. Not do that. I would... <laughs> Aggressive. Uh, I would love it if you did that, regardless <laughs> if they know what we're talking about or not. <laughs> Bro. Not even, many, not even the threat, just the actual... Oh, I really don't care. Let's fucking say it. you imagine how many views I'd get if I just fucking beat this shit out of everybody on Kill Tony, like went up there for my one minute and just took it as like, <laughs> all right, motherfuckers, before you say anything, look at how close I am to you, how big I am, and how many views I will get for coming across the table. <laughs> That's good Matt. Matt Reif's got a million dollar chin, though. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be real careful. Oh, not, Is it not insured? Not <laughs> insured. <laughs> it's gotta be insured. A million dollar chin? Yeah, more than that. That's just in the executive cum that's fucking drawn on the Oh, I'm oh sure. Oh, my God. I, I don't know. I'm going to say I don't know anything about that. Do you that. find him pretty or Who? attractive, Matt Rife? You know what's funny is that I yes. said that Dane Cook's... No, I don't. <laughs> but I found... I, I said Dane Cook's comedy sucked a long time ago on Twitter when I had, like, 200 followers. Uh -huh. And then I had a naked Avi at the time, and so he retweeted it, and it was, like, how I got the beginning of my Twitter addiction. Because I got tons of followers from people. I was like, you know what? Your comedy sucks, asshole. How about that? And I was saying it in like a Rhode Island tone. I was like, aren't we both from, ma aren't we mass holes here? And it was like days of people telling me that I, s bad grammar, all of his <laughs> audience coming after me telling me that I suck. And one of those giving people. Giving you the double finger. <laughs> one of those people is Matt Reif. Somebody pointed really? it out. Really? Yeah. <laughs> A young, an, wait, his, wait, so on his Reif, old Twitter, Twitter stand. Matt Reif wanted to be Dane Cook? He he said something like, um, I can't remember. I, I still have it. I still have the screenshot of the tweet because I saved all these screenshots. And someone's like, oh, look, that's Matt Reif's old, like, old Twitter account that apparently wow. he's like blown Brilliant. up. Yeah, and it's him talking <laughs> shit to me and I never even noticed it. It's <laughs> hysterical. That's really funny. All my old stuff is just going to be me being a domestic terrorist. So, <laughs> I'm like, fuck. Oh, that's interesting. So hey, to answer manifest, your question. Manifest, you know? Like, fucking see it, dream it, be it. I met him. He was very nice with every time I've met him. And then he also... It's I like liked, a book you, Dave. I, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to. What am I going to do? <laughs> Bury him? Different them? audiences. <laughs> different fan bases. Are you going to flirt with him the whole time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have, I have no interest. Yeah, I just... Oh, hey, what's up, buddy? Oh, you can think I, you're good enough to be with me? Can oh. I touch your abs? Is he TikTok famous? Is that the thing? He's, he is... Uh, like, well, Dane Cook is, like, definitely a power. Like he did with TikTok, what Dane did with MySpace, MySpace for oh, sure. Oh, interesting. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I worked with him at the comedy store like a year and a half ago, and I thought he was just a kid, and I didn't, whatever, just a nice, some open micer. And then he walked out, and there was like <laughs> early 20s girls going <laughs> ape shit, and I was like, oh. <laughs> This is interesting. We, and then the other half were in louder with Crowder shirts. So they were just like, they were like obese. <laughs> <laughs> the, two, the two forces. It's like that the picture in the ocean when like, you know, where the, where the fresh water meets the salt water. One's brown and one's clear. Right. Yeah. Uh, we just followed him at, um, me and Caroline were at Kansas City Funny Bone uh, the weekend after he was there. And, okay. the, and there was crazy stories we were like kind of almost like bragging a little bit we we're like you ever seen a meet and greet line like this big they were like we had matt rife last weekend i'm like oh <laughs> they were like women legitimately showed up without a ticket in wedding dresses no way yes see i don't get it what? i don't like my men pretty like he's he's like really pretty and like femme and i just don't i'm not attracted to men like that i see it and i yeah. just 
Did you see Whitney he, had him on her pot? Had her hot, the hot tour girl man. on? Not but, like that. Yeah, he's really? still, he has like a beard and he's not like that. He is pretty, but he's not like that pretty. He looks so, like Angelina Jolie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. He really does. Nailed it. Yeah. The, well, now I want to fuck my wife. <laughs> well, yeah. It's weird. This is like a sea of emotions. That's I never said I did. <laughs> she, Whitney just had the Hawk Tua girl on, uh-huh. and they called Matt Reif. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he and she was like, I am blushing right now because there's like all this chemistry between these two phenomena, internet yeah. phenomenons. Yeah, well, and the, Haley was kind of like losing it. The hack to a She's girl. actually crushing her 15 minutes, though. I think she's doing a really good job. And some of the stuff that comes out of her mouth on podcast, I'm like, that's gold. Mm-hmm. That's really gold. The like, first thing she said to Matt charity. was like, she's doing a lot for charity too. Oh, yeah, so save the dogs. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look, man, suck dick, get famous, save dogs. I'm all for it. Everything she did, <laughs> I'm into. This like, is what I said about her. I was like, she's an American hero. Oh. We should be applauding <laughs> that you can do this in America. No, it, what, you could never do that in Fallujah. No. There's no way. She said she spit on a dick and they're bringing her up on concerts like she's a cancer <laughs> kid. <laughs> <laughs> could never happen in Afghanistan, bud. No, it's God like, bless America. Like, you gotta think USA. it's pretty amazing. Could never yeah. happen in France, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not anymore. Well, not in France. They're not impressed. Yeah. They, they're the ones that showed the World War II soldiers that came back here and were like, you know what French girls do? <laughs> yeah, it's called a French kiss. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, that's, there's all sorts of things you can do now that I've been over in France. Yeah, showed me this. Yes. In, More than just laying the there. <laughs> well, I guess we should probably introduce the show that we're doing here at some point today. As you know, I'm the great Gerard Michaels. The great Gerard Michaels, that's trademark. And this is going to be uh, a kind of a crossover episode. It's not really a Canceled Weekly. Hi, Mickey. You're here with us in spirit. Mm-hmm. But the great Candace Horback of Chatting with Candace. And me, we're we're like scissoring here. This is a scissor. Our schedules keep overlapping. It's so weird. Every time we're in Texas, we're here at the same time. And it's either Austin or Dallas, and it's not planned. It's yeah, so interesting. It is weird. Yeah. She doesn't want to know. <laughs> He's got a tracker on me. <laughs> yeah. <I don't> <laughs> He's like one of those Apple trackers. Oh, weird. That's weird. <laughs> it's strange you're here. You're just texting from a plane. <laughs> oh, you're going to Alaska. I'm going to Alaska. It was, it was, it was cute how you're pretending That's you so didn't odd. know her cop, how she liked her coffee. <laughs> in front of me. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, I didn't know because, you know, you never you never know. Like, you know, it's it like, yeah. We're not predictable creatures. We're not. No, no I mean, That's true. you pretty much are, but like you're, she's also a witch though. Well, she's a bruja. I so. am. I take pride in that. But there's, you have the different cycles and I swear I'm a different person depending on where I'm in my cycle. Yeah, that's so. called uh, being Latino. It's called being a woman. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Latino? No, I just think it's moody. Moody? No offense. No, no. I don't take offense because I am. But I think like if you share that with your partner, it's gonna make everyone's life easier. So there was this. I feel um, like I'm clip. a different person every day. Well, like the phase <laughs> that you're in. So there was this guy, and it was like so. It was adorable because he really had no idea what anything was when it came to like the female cycle. And he's like, so I asked this girl out on a date, and she said we couldn't because she was in her luteal phase. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and when she's out of her luteal phase, then we can go on a date. But I don't know what a luteal phase is and yeah. everyone's like this is a good sign because she wants to show up as her best self and her luteal self is going to be like moody and depressed and just low energy and he had no idea and i think for a long time like the feminist movement made it to a point where we can do anything bleeding and just as strong as a man or whatever right like all these commercials that we had so we're denying the fluidity of what it is to be a woman and then we get called crazy instead of just like leaning into no like hormones have an actual effect on everything yeah so if I just let you know I'm in this phase, then maybe you'll offer me more grace and then I'll do things and take time so I, I'm not like reacting. Go to Can the you? red tent. Okay. <laughs> so, so, uh, I said you're, red tent, you're dirty. And, and this is why we work so well together because she watched that video and came away with that positive outlook like, oh, wow, that's really good. She wants to and see you're her as like, a He's a bitch. And I looked at that video and go, just every day I wake up, please make me fucking gay. Like every day I wake up going, today's the day I'm going to be gay. And I don't you have can to make it happen. Bitches. No, you can't. Like you can, you can do gay things. You got to work for it. Yeah, like I'm like, oh, man. the opposite of pray the gay way. Yeah, it's the opposite. Like, oh, you ever been in a just, Turkish I'm staring prison? at Matt Rife pictures like, just <laughs> no. do something, man. Have you ever just, read... Just give me a little tingle or something. But I would just assume that, like, if somebody said that, I'd be like, so you have an STD or you're on the rag? What are you trying to say? <laughs> yeah. Like, a guy's mind is so basic in that... 
I don't. Th- I'm surprised that we could even grasp that. Well, it's it's. They're just finding out now about how hormones affect weight loss. <laughs> like in 2024, well, they're no. just starting to say, they, because they only really looked at weight loss with men, mm-hmm. and so they applied it to women, and now they're like, oh, all these other hor- hormones affect and where you are in like whether you're perimenopause or postmenopause, it all affects how you lose weight. Mm-hmm. It's nice they finally geared it towards the people who are known for eating disorders <laughs> and having body <laughs> shaming problems. Well, the reason like, oh, we got they... an idea for you too. Now yeah. that you're... Oh, you're gaining weight? Have you ever thought maybe you're just a dude? Yeah. <laughs> Here's now, some more testosterone. Lo- that'll help. You're losing hair from malnutrition and <laughs> yeah. vomiting. And it's like, you know, we did some extra research. We thought to help I'm you. Dudes. Yeah. So for those that don't know, the people that are Sorry, living dudes. under a rock, no, these are the siren sounds of our guests today. We are absolutely blessed to have two amazing guests. This is Dave Landau of uh, Normal World on The Blaze and on YouTube, just yes. headlined at uh, the uh, Mothership yes. here in Austin, Texas. And on the same show was British, I keep saying British fetacy. It's don't so worry, hard for me not to say British. I, I said it 15 mm-hmm. times, Bridget fetacy. And uh, also on the same show, you guys both crushed it. It was amazing. So this is uh, the Chiron, Don, where this people will find This is also kind them. of a crossover yeah. because I have Dumpster Fire and he does Normal World. And it's like the, the crossover of our shows as this well. This is like the yeah, fucking Transformers. <laughs> the, what, what was that one where uh, Planet uh, Captain Planet comes? When oh, the, yeah. The black, the queer, the Asian, they all put their hands in the middle. Yeah, and Who's, then they ruin the society. Yeah. <laughs> our powers combined. We, we will. can make cars on a Affordable. We're gonna ruin a neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> With our po- Captain Planet, he <laughs> mines lithium. It's actually worse for the environment. <laughs> Kids are doing it. If you're gonna have slavery, at least have slavery that helps carbon footprints, right, guys? Yeah, that's yeah, what I've always we're said. We're helping things. That's why you don't turn on the radiator, they're handcuffed too. <laughs> <laughs> Safe. That's just the lady Safe boys. Yeah, that's, that's just. Oh, well, yeah, that's, that's just, the lady That's just the lady. That's just the ones that are taken. <laughs> anyway, going on. Sorry. I, so wait, I got to tell the story. I, I was with Dave about a lady boy. I was with yeah. Dave. <laughs> so the ones that are taken. <laughs> well, yeah, so with I was with Dave. He's in... talking about Matt Reif, and we're tag teaming a lady boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to dip his toe into the pond. <laughs> have you ever seen? Have you ever seen the video where the guy shows uh, lady boys uh, American trans men and they're like, oh, it's like they're not even trying. <laughs> 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 so I was with Dave in uh, Jacksonville, and the Jacksonville Comedy Zone, it's a great club, and it's in a Ramada. <laughs> yeah. And it, I don't know, there's still like a lot of Katrina families that live there or something, I, I don't know. Yes. And he's on stage, and it's so loud, there's, there's a, a cookout going on around the pool, and there's just kids screaming, and in one of his awkward silences, when people are trying to find whether or not they should laugh or call the cops on one of his jokes... <laughs> A kid starts screaming, and he says out of nowhere, and this is during the opening weekend of the movie, he goes, oh, that's just the sound of freedom. Oh, no. oh, and in the back of the room, we were like, what? He goes, it's better if we don't ask. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, almighty. This is the most un- But the timing of it, with these kids screaming in the back. Because it was, like, painful screaming. <laughs> How do you get your brain to be so quick and pull? Like, it's genius. a superpower no, to me. You. It really trauma is. Or <laughs> it's trauma. Oh yeah. It's not, <laughs> some people get CTE. He gets. You know. No, it's incredible. Like, I you. get just blown away. Yeah. It's Thank you very much. You know what I also thought was awesome is when when you were on Rogan is like how much you were just like hyping him up and I just thought that was so beautiful because there's so much competition with everything and it's so rare that you see someone that is just like really excited for someone else and I just thought that was. Great. Oh, I love that. I yeah. mean, I also think no, that there's no, it so- meant the world to me. But mm-hmm. God, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry. Thanks. Um, no, I think there's a lot of comedians, and I think Dave is like probably one of the most underrated comedians that people don't know about. Mm-hmm. And it's it's always like strange to me because as someone who watches a lot, a lot of comedians don't even really watch other comedians, but I love watching comedy and just watching the audience for like five nights straight. I love being up in those balconies at Mothership because you can see the audience like physically doubling over. You know, Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of comedians perform there and it's like, 
people laugh, but to see them physically reacting with their whole body, mm-hmm. that is like, it is a gift. It's mm-hmm. truly what you give Thank those you. people uh, other than shock and awe. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and I love when they groan too, but it's like they're groaning, laughing. It's, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, uh, there's been a couple of comedians who I've seen do that. Most of them are dead. <laughs> Um, <laughs> don't, 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 the day's young. don't put that out there because they're all tortured. Um, and mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just like, that's a gift you're giving to, and to be able to do that, you know, two hours in a night and then the next night and then the following night. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. always changing his set, be, being able to jump in and out of talking to the crowd and not, you know, incorporating it you have that thing right now that should be going viral of the drunk lady that it's you so good it's oh, that so is posted, good yeah. yeah i'm like put out two and three right now please uh, yeah like a make it a series. series yeah i think i said pussy and it's so instagram's like we're not putting this out. oh yeah well, they're one, so one thing you got to do going forward is you got to get a camera behind you to get audience reaction because that's I a think good idea part of being at his show is like it's obviously your jokes are funny. Like you're like if the if Ted came to life, you're like the teddy bear that tells these insane jokes on stage, man. So <laughs> you know, like ah, oh, you know. Uh, but it's the audience. Yeah, I mean it was a compliment. I don't know if it came out. That no, way. it did. But it did. It was just funny. The uh, <laughs> like he comes out on stage. Matt's six foot eight. He brings it down. Looks at the cut. Goes, I got a big cock. So yeah, like, it's like, so good. Oh, yeah, great. so good. Yeah. It's your Ted. I'm like I'm looking at Ted. So. Because, yeah, Matt always forgets. <laughs> but, the, the, <laughs> I'm a dwarf. but it's the audience reaction as people look around going, I want to laugh, but is everybody else laughing? Like, I, like, am I the only one that gets the pedophile joke? Like, it's so funny, dude. That's why I try to do, like, seven in a row. <laughs> yeah, but the best is, is that the people in the front are usually the ones who are dying, and they don't have the benefit of seeing anyone in front of them laughing. Yeah. And they're the ones... It's weird, too, in that, in that stage. I always notice the people who are right under where the green room balcony is. I don't know if it's like the positioning or something. They seem to, or if they're looking at you sideways, they always see the, seem the most subdued of everyone in the whole place. Yeah. Everyone else is like dying, but all, along the side and that back, it just, oh, I so, don't. So the VIP where we were next to it is the green room? Yes. Yeah. Oh man, I was yelling at y'all motherfuckers to shut up. <laughs> I was like, shh. Oh, I don't blame you. I was you like, should've. I don't yeah. know what the hell was going on over there. Yeah. We're gonna come over there and crack some fucking skulls. Yeah. Why do you think? Um, but it, it, why do you think? In all sincerity, you've been on TV. You were on Kumia Forever. Yeah. Crowder. You know, anybody that knows you and has seen you knows you're one of the top ten working comedians today. But really to your nice. point, the general public is like, who? So thank you. <laughs> so, what a compliment. So why do you think that is, bro? Like, why do you think Shit when sandwich. in the beginning of this, yeah. every well, no, it's the truth because, no, like, is, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I sit and you know look up to a guy like this, and I aspire to be to a guy like this, and I'm like, and then you're like, maybe not. What the fuck is <laughs> going on here? Like, on yeah, maybe I should lose 50 pounds and put on blush like Matt Rife, like you know, like. So I've been doing a lot of push-ups and kegels. <laughs> Just in case. Why, why, why do you think that you've kind of? Um, almost flown under the radar even though i mean you've you've been on with the biggest guys in the world man i mean you know i don't know like it, it's it's a lot of like what you just said about her she's the first person really who ever even brought me up on rogan who was already having me on his club at his club you know and like talked to me like built me up another comic that actually helped mm-hmm. like you were a comic that helps and i think you know me as a comic that helps other people too mm-hmm. and it's not even like a help thing it's just i think you should care about each other instead of like be stabbing each other in the back yeah rising and, tide lifts all ships for yeah, sure and but, I, i've never and, and it was amazing that she did that like because nobody does that mm-hmm. like it was it, it, and i've been such a fan of her that i was like shocked that she had a high opinion of me mm-hmm. so i don't know like I don't know. I, it might be my own psyche. Maybe I'm my own worst enemy. Maybe I get my I push myself out of the way. Maybe other people see me as competition, nobody so they don't want to help. Me. <laughs> nobody puts nobody puts Davy in the corner. Nobody puts Davy in the corner. <laughs> Well, but it's, it's, it's funny, hard though. to break down. Like, I don't know, because uh, I've had a lot of opportunities. No, and you can pigeonhole just like a right-wing dude, and you're not like a right-wing dude. Even though, like, I am. I'm, I'm all right with it. But, I mean, like, for some reason, you get pigeonholed in this, like... 
Well, being on the Blaze obviously kind of extends itself yeah. to that. But what I think is interesting about the Blaze is, A, I said last night, how do you have a job at the Blaze? Like, do they know what you're doing when you're not there? Right. <laughs> they know. Do they know? Like, what, that, and ever then, heard the headmaster and then, bit? And then, <laughs> right. And then I've been there, no. like, a handful of times. You know what I mean? So I feel like there's this weird transition when it comes to, like, the conservatives or even, like, the Republicans, because I feel like they're slightly different. Yeah. But it just seems to be more welcoming and, like, open to whoever is supporting, like, the fact foundations of like freedom no that's a very good point and this is kind of what kills me in the comedy community is like what do you call them conservatives or whatever just anti-woke people very open to having left-wing voices like on their shows mm -hmm. very open to having left-wing people like even tour with them but the left it's been my experience i don't know if you guys feel differently they shut you out completely mm. as soon as you're off message Clubs just stop answering email. Like, dude, I came up in New York comedy doing five shows a night. I can't, I can't get booked in New York. Mm, you wow. know, like I got to, like I can rent my own theater. I can go out to the Stress Factory, but like, getting up in New York comedy club is like an impossibility. I can't work for free. Well, so, yeah, some places they definitely are starting to switch because money is money, and that will never change. Yeah. So if you start selling tickets, it's mm -hmm. a little bit different. Yeah. Ouch. But but even when no no I didn't mean, I didn't mean like that. <laughs> I meant anyone. Okay. I meant anybody. <laughs> yeah. uh, do, I, do I look like Ted now, motherfucker? Don't worry. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Look, I was selling out theaters for a hot six months, and then that roller coaster went down. <laughs> um, but no, I, I think that it's it just comes down to like money in that case. Where it, but you are right. Like everybody who I lost is a friend were never my friends and mm -hmm. they were comics that were in the business who were all all liberal across the board extreme liberals and it was because first i was on Artie and anthony and people were a little jealous so i started losing friends because of that and then once i got on crowder people were just pissed that i was on something that was big and that it was right wing and there was stuff that being said so i lost so many friends in comedy almost instantly people that i had helped get work and help get into clubs and oddly none of the ones that you would assume but like the white knights and and that sort of thing so it's mm. like i i completely got got stabbed by all those people mm. and like it so it's hard to say like if i'm even conservative or left wing i feel like i have a lot of liberal ideology as well as, as right wing ideology mm. but I, I i'm not supported by that part of the community and there's the insecurity of that part of the community as well where I just don't think a lot of people will help you. Yeah, mm. I think you're a '90s Democrat, which is a 2024 Nazi. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> yeah, that's what. Yeah, my. Yeah, that's. That's, that's where I land. <laughs> that's where you're at. <laughs> a couple, a couple of Nazis over here. It's funny too, like the the. There's always this talk about how like women are very competitive and women in the comedy are competitive, and I'm like, eh, men are too. Oh yeah. I mean, they're just a little bit shadier in about fairness, it. In fairness, though, most men in comedy are women. <laughs> They're in their feminine, I would say. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it, 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 it's it should be a team sport, but it's like a lot of individuals, and it's not the things even necessarily that they say in front of your face or in the green room. It's what they do after, you know. And mm. I really don't, for the most part, I don't really enjoy the quote-unquote comedy community. I like comedy in that I get to do cool stuff like this and that it affords me the opportunity, but comedy is very much like a chore to me it's like something i have to do to do the things that i actually want to do i will say though austin the the because i was in la and then i had a similar experience to davy in the corner over there <laughs> that's me um, I, but it was different because i was at playboy and i wrote i was i wrote this column right after trump got elected that donald trump is already making america great again i was still shilling for the left in this column but just the headline alone it was right after the inauguration it was too soon it was 2016 and I lost a lot of friends, a lot of, I, it's still, and people in comedy, and one of the things I was talking about last night is that I'm mad at myself because I allowed it to kind of scare me off stage. I mm. didn't want to be around, like people who I loved and supported and I thought were my friends were unfollowing me or blocking me and it was, I'm like, I see you in green yeah. rooms. It was hurtful and I didn't know how to handle it at all because I was like, I thought comedy just was, like we were in the trenches together. So mm -hmm. I was mistaken in thinking that that was something that united us all. And I also just assumed that we were working for the joke. Like I, I didn't think that there was anything 
not like some ideology that we needed to push. So that was um, unsettling to me. And well, and it, it changed, right? I mean, I think you're really onto something there too. If I had started comedy three years later, um, I would I would have quit immediately. Like something happened in 2015 with the Trump campaign that just broke comedian's brain. Yeah, it and at that point I was only like four in years York. in. It broke people in, in um, five years. LA. Five years in. And your your Twitter is phenomenal. Your Twitter is Thank unbelievable. You. Oh, yeah, she's that great. Yeah, unbelievably even, good. Yeah. Uh, but there's something and I you know, I kind of felt the same way. And I saw well since we're name dropping all over this episode, there was Andrew I had just gotten passed at a club and Andrew Schultz was he wasn't Andrew Schultz yet. But he was a house comedian, right? So there's this thing called, you know, getting past in the club. It's not really a thing anymore. But it, I am the only non-comedian here. Yeah. Okay. It's like, you know, My art form is different. You know, you know how you like to say, like, I'm a contract girl? <laughs> yeah. That's what getting past in the club is. It's like, no, okay. no. I'm one, of, I'm one of the past comedians here. Okay. Like, I get booked, you know? Yeah. So, you get paid. It, yeah, it used bucks. to be like... You get paid. Yeah, it used to be, yeah, 25 bucks a set. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, They're but like, it's like, excuse me, those chairs are mine. I'm getting $25 <laughs> yeah. for this set. Yeah. It's a whole nighting process. You, you know, you pass an audition, you get on your knees, the club comes up and taps you on your shoulders. Yeah. And Harking but, was 80. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, doing, I'm doing four sets a night for 25 bucks and drinking $250 worth of booze. Yeah. Yeah. Are we yeah. talking about the comedy store? Because that's basically what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so... Uh, when you're like a past comic, you're you're doing multiple shows at the club, so you're like hanging out in the green room, right? And then this booker comes in. First of all, Me Too changed everything in New York. Like every booker became a blue-haired woman overnight. Well, because all the bookers were fucking Me Too. Well, there's well there, yeah. there is yeah, yeah, too. That's, when I first started in comedy, like it was a yeah, party. Me it, too it, was, it was a frat all. house, man. <laughs> yeah, you oh. couldn't rape anybody anymore. You couldn't make any girl suck your dick on <laughs> stage time. That. Yeah, whole power this shift. Is bullshit. We That's used to why be, I'm not we used anywhere. To be a proper country, guys. You know, look what they've done to us. You have to suck a man's dick to get on stage. What yeah. happened to this America? Now you got to work. We're talking about Matt Wright. All right, so the, <laughs> now you got to work for it. What a <laughs> but there was the the point I'm making, guys. <laughs> What happened to the America that I know and love with a woman? Oh, oh, on her knees for anything. What yeah, have they done to the world? We shall overcome. Where's the land I knew as a boy where you could suck a dick for fame? <laughs> now you just have to allude to spitting on one and you can... Yeah, now you're famous. famous. Meanwhile, Corey Haim's sitting in an early grave. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Sorry. I'll be over. I'll stay in my corner. Maybe, maybe we did find out why you're still in that corner. Yeah, yeah there's too much darkness. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that it was a lot of fun in the beginning. And it didn't right. really matter whether you were liberal, conservative, just like it, you were funny. Raping. Yeah, it didn't matter if you were. And the you only know, way two Corys can keep a secret is if both of them are dead. <laughs> Still got one running around. He's, just out, and he's, he's choreographing around <laughs> with Flint Biscuit. I'm you gotta cry. get Corey Feldman on. on Dude, normal. You have to. Get I normal. went to his concert in hopes of getting him because he was gonna do it, but then mm. he's, he backed out. That's what happened oh, with me wow. too. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We talked for a minute. You were supposed to do Corey Feldman? Yeah. We have him on mine. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then he just ghosted. So yeah. we showed up. And we, uh, I dressed as him in Lost Boys with the do rag <laughs> and uh, with the, ban the Rambo bandana, and Angela dressed like an angel, and uh, Garrett dressed like him in the Burbs, and we showed up and we were doing everything we could to get his attention. Mm -hmm. And then watching the show, I, I, I felt very bad for, for him. Did you not think of dressing as Michael Jackson and just having him come to you? <laughs> I, thought about, I thought about just putting a halo over my head and looking enough like Corey, the other Corey, that he would think that it was him. You could have dressed like Charlie Sheen and had him run into a trap. And oh, that's caught true. Him. If I just yeah. dressed up, up like a tub of Crisco. You <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just dress up like a thing of KY and, and Harvey Weinstein's couch at the Four Stevens. <laughs> Four Stevens was Four the name Stevens. of the producers. <laughs> the Four Seasons was the hotel. <laughs> no, we uh, went because I seriously want to interview him because I loved him as a kid. Like, stand by me. I watched with everybody my Everybody loved him as a yeah. kid. That, that was the problem. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the problem. <laughs> you know, Cherry Pie, that song? 
It's written about his asshole. Why does this keep coming <laughs> yeah. up on every podcast I'm on with you? <laughs> so what the fuck? I just wanted to use it again. What was it like working at Playboy? <laughs> Wait, she was making a point. I lost uh, my point. I, I'm sorry. If I don't I know where it was. <laughs> yeah, I got lost in all of that. Oh, she it's wasn't funny. a. He was oh, explaining was passing, about passing. hookers and getting passed. Just yeah. being passed at a club, and you can oh. go in there as a regular. And oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was just basically saying that, like, they let you in the back door, like the Corey Haim door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> just keep coming. So <laughs> the problem, they wouldn't stop coming. Look at her now; she's a comedian. <laughs> That's what Corey gets. No, they just keep coming. See, this well, is what I need. I need somebody to jump on that. Like, I'm not the only weirdo in the room. Well, not for that. I mean. Why even close the door? Just keep it. <laughs> right, sorry. In ten seconds or less, uh-huh. the, it, it stopped being about whether you were funny. It stopped. It started being about whether you were on message, and that kind of changed everything. And then everybody kind of got the point that it was like it doesn't matter if you're funny. It matters if you're saying what we want to say. Mm-hmm. And the whole Andrew Schultz thing was a booker came into the room. It was a booker, and she was like, Andrew, you're not going to tell that joke. And the reason I'm telling this is because it kind of scared me out of being who I wanted to be for a little bit, also. Mm-hmm. And then I really regret that and went too far the other way, of being mm-hmm. like, I'm saying whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. Andrew sat there and he goes, yo, are you a comedian or are you a booker? Like, if you want to tell your jokes, you go on stage. And she's like, Andrew, I will not book you here if you tell that joke, that Trump joke. And he goes up and he wasn't Andrew Schultz. He was just a guy. Yeah. And he sat on the stool and looked over in this tight little room and was like, y'all see that fat bitch with the blue hair over there? She says y'all can't handle a Trump joke. Is that true? <laughs> and then you could, you could like feel the heat radiating. She was like Chernobyl. You're like, oh, this thing's about to blow. And the joke was like kind of an innocuous joke. It was very funny. It was something to the effect of like, I don't want Donald Trump to be president, but I, I don't want Donald Trump to ever not run for president. He's the funny, like we need to make him run for mayor, run for yeah. governor, just line people up and let this dude roast, right? And it was a funny joke in the room with Clapped, and he like looked at her, and she like stormed out of the room. And this, this was like 2015, and I was like, "This is fucking weird." Man. Yeah. Like this is a weird thing. Yeah, I to, like throw I, a fit over. Yeah, yeah, I feel that is like something I regret is just letting it kind of scare me off stage. Although again, it's like that gay everything happens for a reason. It forced me at the same time. My audience online was growing, and I was like, "Well, just focus on this," and then and I. It freed me from waiting tables, which I was doing at the time, and I stopped getting up as much, and I started doing dumpster fire in my garage, and then 2019, like, through all of 2019, and then 2020 came, so I was already set up for the Mm. pandemic, and had I been waiting tables and grinding and, like, still doing comedy, I would have been completely fucked, Mm. so... Yeah, I see. I noticed the shift in 2012 when I first went to LA when they were going to bring back *In Living Color*, and I was going to, I was well for like two minutes. I was going to write for it, then they canceled it. Hmm. But it was very irreverent, and I think, but I could just see the writing on the wall of the different things going on, a lot of the bureaucracy going on in LA, and I could feel it in the rooms that stuff was. I I just didn't like it. I'm like, and what's the goal here? I'm like, I have been working as a comic on the road at that point for you know eight nine years why am i or at seven yeah eight years so i'm like why did i come here to get approval of others just so i can go get booked where i've already been working all these years it made no sense to me Mm -hmm. because my goal was stand up i i want to make movies but i want to make independent movies Mm -hmm. i don't want to work with studios i don't want to i mean i would don't get me wrong but it's like i wanted an in that's why I was there sure, yeah, yeah. but then getting the other approval of comics I'm like I can't I'm sober I can't go to this place every night yeah and hang that's out the other with thing the people. hanging out to like do get time networking I, yeah and it just wasn't worth it to me so like I could I'd go to a couple clubs and do time but it all the whole time I'm just trying to now get booked on the road because I rented an apartment yeah you know so I'm like all right I got to keep making money so mm-hmm. it's always just been about doing stand up to me that I never really was trying to seek the approval of like these clicks mm-hmm. when did you think that it for the longest time I felt like comedy was about pushing boundaries and then somewhere it changed to becoming about staying within the boundaries right and and you take people that are like there's people that have never even told a joke they just mimic on TikTok and they got they they're hosting late night they never actually said a word see i don't know that me maybe it's because i'm outside of it i feel like comedy never used to really be political at all like i think of um 
Ka- like what's her name Kathy Griffin and like Chelsea Handler like that was my exposure to sure. comedy or Dane Cook like it was like just like storytelling kind of and once in a while looking back maybe there was a little bit of like I a mean, tiny Carlin sprinkling. was very political see I never yeah. wa- I wasn't like into comedy like I did yeah. like the, the poppy kind of people we didn't hate each other right like like Pryor was very political right but it was in a way where it was like ah yeah Italians do be like that like I think somewhere along the line, we actually, like, started hating each other. So we couldn't joke with one another. Well, Eddie Murphy brought up people together more. Pryor was more showing people something they had never seen before, mm. which was, like, people were not aware of, like... They were aware of the ghetto, but they never heard a story about it. I mean, this is a guy who was raised in a brothel. This is a guy who was a crack addict. And it's like, you didn't hear that ever before of somebody being that open. I mean, besides maybe Dick Gregory, but he was way more hidden than Prior. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And Red so, Fox. Red yeah. Fox. But Red Fox was street jokes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was funny, but they were just dirty jokes. But I mean, Pryor was saying like things about where he came from, what his addictions were. All, like mm-hmm. it, That's why he's so well regarded is because it shifted into making it vulnerable and personal which had never been done before. And I think there is a political aspect to that because you're seeing a side of like poverty and, and things that you didn't really, and at least white America at the time, for the most part, wasn't really paying attention to. Yeah, but Candace, you make a great point because the true art form is like saying something, making a statement, but in a way that's so entertaining or appealing that you don't really realize the statement is being made. Well, there's also, there. W- I didn't, feel the attitude that I was being talked at or being infantilized where it was like I know the way to think and the way to live and this is the way to do it so let me preach for an hour on this stage it was more just like again like storytelling where Mm -hmm. now I feel like I can't watch any sitcoms because like there's an agenda that's being pushed so heavily Mm -hmm. and I remember it was like right after um, COVID like 21 or something and every show I was watching I had to just abandon because it was just like they were laying it on so thick. Oh, yeah, God. Even the commercials. What was it? So Brooklyn Nine Nine. What? Oh, yeah. the, the end of that s- series. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it was crazy. It was such a funny show. And then, the, then like all of the BLM and 2020 mm-hmm. happened, and they had no their show about cops. And there's like a <laughs> band <outside. laughs> and they did not know how to deal with it at all. And yeah. it was just like talk about breaking your ankle on the dismount. It was just <laughs> yeah. holy yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> that it became unwatchable. Mm-hmm. You were like, wow, you guys really don't know how to deal with Reno this, 911, you? same thing. The Reno 911, oh, which is one of the greatest shows of all time. So good. Yeah, and then the remake was like, and almost abusive, like it was a war crime. <laughs> Like, mm-hmm. they, sh- they should have been tried. Whoever the writers were should have been tried for well, social and, injustice. And, and Thomas Lennon and um, I'm forgetting the other guy's name, they wrote a book called How to Make uh, Movies for Fun and Profit with Fun Crossed Out. And it's mm-hmm. all about how they wrote 17 again, whatever. It's like how to take a very hacky idea, write it into a movie, and sell it to Hollywood. That's the whole point of the book. And that way you can also make a nine one, Reno 911 and do whatever you want. But it's like how to play the game both ways. It's a great mm. book. Mm. So it's, but it's fascinating because it's like, but then you took the thing that was art and for you that you thought was funny and kind of started pushing it towards what those people wanted mm-hmm. to get it back on. And that's, I don't know, that's kind of depressing. I don't, I, like, I don't think you should have to push a, a line either. I think if you're natural voice, like when I'm on stage, I'm just being me. So whatever you see, that's who I am, and I hope that comes off that way. You know, like that's just me being funny. I'm not trying to push an audience. I'm not trying to be edgy. I'm not trying to not be edgy. I'm not trying to be clean. I'm not trying to be dirty. Like, I think the problem is, is people now think like, oh, I have to be shock. I have to be edgy. I have to be, you know, or I have to be squeaky clean and try to be Nate Bargatze, and you're not that. But you see a lot of people just trying to be shock, and I think that is also a problem because the pendulum swinging it's overcorrecting the wokeness right you know where it's like we don't need it where it's like that all the time mm-hmm. like you should be true to your own voice that's like you said when it's everything telling you how you should think and also with stand up you should never tell people how to think no like your whole thing is like you're a piece of shit and, and they're supposed more. to relate to you <laughs> none right. of us graduated from college <laughs> no i barely got out of high school yeah. i'm still trying to figure out how i did i have it best in eighth grade education <laughs> so it's like i don't i don't i don't stand on stage and preach about how you should feel and i'm in recovery like what am i that's why when people watch dumpster fire i'm like i'm not gonna sit here and tell you how to vote i know a lot of people want to be affirmed and they want 
they want to know that their beliefs this is like how it works like confirmation bias is just like i want to know that i'm thinking correctly mm -hmm. i want to feel like mm -hmm. i'm right and i'm like i'm a moron <laughs> you guys do what's best for your family i don't care how you vote and that's a controversial thing to say now mm -hmm. People will be like, oh, little Miss Captain of the Fence Riding Team or whatever. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. I don't care. I'm not riding a fence. I'm that? just being little honest. Captain of the Fence Riding Team. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be my t shirt. Uh, well, well gonna, people say that to me. I'm furnace that one yeah. into my next. Uh... <laughs> well, people say that to me too. Like, oh, you really ride the fence too much. And it's like, no, because I have issue to issue opinions about what affects me. Sure. And I don't judge people based on what they do. Like, I don't. Like, I've made too many mistakes in my life. <laughs> to look at other people and be like, you know what? Yeah. You should get it together. Have you ever driven a burning car down a freeway backwards <laughs> because you were drunk off your ass? <laughs> like, I, no, it's not, David, it, I don't think No, that. most people haven't. So it's hard for them to be like, no, Dave, tell me, what are all the secrets of how to win at life? And, these, and that, this is the thing. Most Americans are not tuning into this stuff for... They want to laugh. They mm -hmm. want to just... Yeah. That's what... It, it was a weird... Yeah, there's. I think there's so many forces at play talking about all of these things because the other thing that's happened that I've been contemplating a lot is, and I contemplated this when we had this meeting with these guys who are going to do shorts for us because they're like, oh, dumpster fire is good, but you need to package it differently in TikTok shorts. And we had a meeting with these young Gen Z kids from Senegal, and the look on this kid's face when he's like, what's your strategy? What's your brand? And what? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. He was like, wow, how do you even have a fucking business? Like, how are you even... You're, you're, getting, how, negged, you're getting negged by a teenager from Senegal? You're like, I have brilliant. fucking bread whenever I want to eat it, bro. Uh, Why don't we calm way, down? that's <laughs> not true. I'm going to defend these kids, because first of all, they speak because like, you're a white girl, I get it, no, no. No, because they speak like four <laughs> languages, and he's like a genius, and they are like wonderkins, but they came up with, you are a personal brand, yeah. and you need a strategy. They view the world that way. I came up in the 90s where it was like, fuck you, we're not selling out, we're making sure. art. Yeah. Totally. And I still have that that like factory setting well, in me. They, I, I, God, I that's love a that, because I mean, that, that's where it really comes from. At the end of the day, we're all kind of like class count clowns and outlaws, right? Like, that's what this is. It's like, oh, we're you don't you don't want me to say this mm -hmm. okay i'm definitely not going to say it but the money comes in and activism i think this maybe go to back to your point activism is meant to be taken very seriously by nature comedy is not meant to be taken seriously by nature so when people are taking activism and trying to pass it off as comedy you're doing both poorly mm -hmm. and that's like saying that's saying i lie for the last oh. decade right so it's, it's tragedy it's activism with a laugh track it's you felt, horrible activism and it's horrible comedy. You felt Jim Carrey as Joe Biden being high energy and playing electric <laughs> guitar was not a... You didn't like Hillary <laughs> Clinton not. playing the piano? The night comedy died? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I, and, and I like Hayden McKinnon, but I was watching that and I'm like, this isn't real, right? No, I yeah. thought it was parody. And <laughs> yeah, then I was I like, thought... oh, God, this is real. You know, at yeah. the end when I realized... I still watch it sometimes just to laugh. Yeah, because it was the day that they insane. thought... I just can't imagine Lauren Michaels who's been in his office doing coke with Belushi, just like you're gonna what? Uh, all right, you're yeah. gonna play. A, yeah, I'm just gonna play Hallelujah on the piano. Some go do some Leonard Cohen. That's the cold open. <laughs> but what's funny looking and at I mean it now cold, is, it, I buddy. showed it to somebody who didn't, a boomer who didn't know that they did that, and they were like, "Is she singing Hallelujah because he won?" I'm like, "It could be perceived that way." Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. But that's not actually what was happening here. Yeah. That's true. That is a it's a weird song to pick. If it was more energy behind it, they would have been like, "Wow, they're really celebrating Trump's presidency." Yeah, it's you know, and at, at that level, I just don't get it, right? Because you're making so much money, like why? But at the low levels where you got to make money, there's there's scripts that I get that are like own the libs, and I'm like, I don't want to do this. This is not funny. And I was like, if you just let us be funny people will be like, oh, those guys are cool and we'll win the culture war that way. But if you make it like, oh, but make sure you really turn the no, knife in on this, this trans kid. Problem. And it's like, I don't give a shit. Like, this yeah, is just no. hacking. This yeah, is not funny. It's I making you look bad. That's the problem, yes. too, is approaching yes. it like it's a war, right? And, and then you're, everyone's always on the defense. Then it's like, how can I, like, you bring a gun, that whole thing, right? So everyone keeps, like, escalating with, like, their weapon of choice. And then it's not really <laughs> changing anything. Yeah, so. well, conservatives are showing up with balloon animals. <laughs> 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 I think it's, it's like just don't participate in the thing, you yeah. know, to like whatever extent we've talked about this. So it's like 
sure guys shouldn't be in the bathroom there's a a right like what do you call it like a sprinter today that was all over x full package on display ran as a man until 45 is now like 50 something decided to run as a woman in the paralympics i don't know <laughs> <laughs> no no there was something there was, maybe no there was that's the there, final call on it <laughs> Pro, right? I guess me. I don't know. I don't I, care I, that you identify I as a woman. I, I care that you identify as not having legs. No, I might have the name on me. Hold on a second. Um, no, there was something yeah. I was reading about someone doing this in the Paralympics, and I was like, really? Even the Paralympics? Oh like, really? You can't. Yeah. And then J.K. Roll. Yeah, where is it? Uh, Petrillo. Can you imagine trying to hide a but cock I'm, in the Special Olympics? Not even trying. No, you can see it. It's just there. Really? Just Good. there, like clearly shaped. Really? And then no one's even mad. And I just don't understand it. Right. Uh, And so I guess my point is, like, instead of fighting it and just being outraged, just, like, don't sit down. Don't participate. You run by yourself, you asshole. Right? You're competing against yourself. That's a hard one, though, man. Like, if you're Riley Gaines and you've been working your whole life towards this moment, that's a very tough one. It's a very hard one. Like, on a certain level, I I almost think, I wish comedians would. But if everyone sat down, though, there would be no race. And then there would be no choice but to pull this person out of the pool, is my point. So instead of, like, going to your keyboard and, like, making it this thing, just, like. Yeah, but it's not, that's not even, I disagree. I push back on that because it shouldn't be up to the girls. Because the women that I've interviewed on, from, who, like, not Riley, but Paula, I had her on my podcast. And they all keep waiting for the adults to show up and say, oh, no, this has gone too far. Yeah. And nobody ever does. Which is wild. And th- I think the same thing happened at the Olympics. You hear from people who are competing, and they're like, we just thought eventually, Someone. like, somebody would be like, no, men can't, you know, box women. And nobody does. So... I don't feel it doesn't feel fair fair again to like put it on these women who have worked so hard to be the ones I mean I think it is gonna fall to them right exactly I don't and unfortunately they're gonna lose out on medals and and all these things but it's it doesn't feel fair that that should fall on them to me it's not fair but like you can't wait for someone else to rescue you at the same point and all these dads like what the heck are you doing with your daughter in a changing room and you're just letting this happen yeah they don't want to lose their job because somebody goes after them online and puts a facebook post up that this guy's a bigot which in a weird way is the the fault of the right because like hey if if these guys had union gigs like my grandfather did they could say whatever the hell they wanted to say and i ain't gonna lose my job like there's no there's no confidence you can have in the world like a 1960s grandfather that's got a job for life and a pension and they'll just like <laughs> let that hard art fly dude like i agree i think that that's something you know obviously there are bad issues with unions at some point but i think we need Teachers to bring back unions. the italian mob as i've said many times <laughs> and it should be involved in probably every sport trust me it'll they be got take- a little greedy the problem is but they got the a little too was greedy things. but you think too with hoffa they're like you still can't find him can you that should be a learning lesson a learning well lesson. there was a guy so my sister lived in um in south Bo- where where was she in boston she was somewhere in boston and there was some guy going around doing something and then they uncle didn't- whitey they didn't go to the cops. They told like the local pizza guy, and then he just disappeared. The guy who was doing this. So they did. They they would like often in their neighborhood go to the mob before they even yeah, went you, to the you cops. Didn't hear a lot of, yeah, uh, you didn't hear a lot of drag queen story time at the elementary school well, back with the Gambinos. Out of, it's weird because it's like out of, out of presence <laughs> in the community. Can you imagine? <laughs> just, right. just, hey, uh, hey, you're not gonna go inside talk to the kids, hey, right? Yeah. I heard this thing. You're gonna. Hey, Sammy, uh, is that a guy in a dress there? What are you doing? You're Let me tell you something. <laughs> we all make mistakes. How about you turn around, go home? We all make I got a funny mistakes. story. And tell all your other queer friends. <laughs> they can do whatever they want at the bars. The elementary school's off limits. As he's reading, you just see two, <laughs> two wops just laying down plastic. <laughs> That'd be a back. funny sketch. <laughs> What's this about? No, no, keep reading your books. You got, you got Vinny with one of those hall yeah. monitor safety, uh, safety fucking belts. So, hey, yeah. you with the uh, double D titch and the ten inch schlong there. Where, yeah. where do you fucking think you're going yeah. with uh, that fucking uh, bone C-spot oh, run yeah. book, huh? Oh, one, whoa, look at that. One fish, two fish, three <laughs> fish. You're going to be sleeping with fish? Keep reading your story. See spot run. Oh, no. Spot can't run because his kneecaps is broken. Yeah. Oh, that's a real shame how that goes. <laughs> yeah, Maybe spot should have understood boundaries. <laughs> oh, the places will like go. the mob story hour? 
Star Wars doesn't seem any better, by the way. No. <laughs> this is a story of Vinny the Rat, yeah. the man who couldn't keep his mouth shut. Yeah, really <laughs> to give a mouse a cookie. <laughs> you don't want to talk about what happens. <laughs> when that mouse becomes a rat, oh. the kids are just crying. <laughs> <laughs> I hey, think if Candace is trying to open up a school. Maybe you know we can put you in touch with some people, and you know, uh, get yeah. you the right uh, heads of the family. I to, think that's uh, right. You get the right people. Yeah, yeah, yeah you we, see them. we know people who know people. Principals mm-hmm. just got you know? slicked back hair. It's <laughs> a cigarette. What can I do for you? <laughs> today, and today for lunch, no spaghetti with a little bit of the meat gravy. I don't want spaghetti. You want to eat the spaghetti? <laughs> My daughter's been back there for three hours. You eat the fucking spaghetti. <laughs> you made me pop an eye out of your skull for day medna? <laughs> I, I, I ain't eating nothing but carbs. It's all right. There's recess. <laughs> there's a break. Uh, Wait for your break. I uh, <laughs> I think a lot of times, like what we talk about, that was stuff like that. Like when I bring it on stage and it's it's I've gotten good feedback from trans community and both the right where like I still do the joke but it's basically like if I were to compete as a woman I would win nothing <laughs> so there's no way yeah, for, like anybody joke. would care or protest they'd just be like also the trans community doesn't give a shit it's the fucking well, no, white it, women with a twitter account not you though You're but right. I've had people say like this is how to do it <laughs> should I pivot <laughs> it's like this is how to like point out how ridiculous it is without shaming one person right. it's shaming myself and it's like a lot of times they're like well this is how you do it like we appreciate you pointing it out in this way and it's not it, that's my natural go-to i'm not trying to please anybody mm-hmm. but the idea of is like to point out how ridiculous it is <laughs> is to just put me as an olympian <laughs> and let the crowd visualize that you know it, it's absurd and i think I think that's the problem is we, we have these conversations and we, we don't think it's as prevalent as it is, but it is at an Olympic level now mm-hmm. where it is mm-hmm. kind of just, why is everything hateful if we do bring it up? And I think also in, in society, men should protect women mm-hmm. and we're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is why I keep saying the WNBA, those players should know their goddamn place and stop asking for more money because once they get any kind of real money, all the dudes are going to start being Boy. like, I play too. They sure <laughs> oh, Can you imagine when, can you imagine when it's a Joanna man? Yeah. Eventually you're just going to show up. making a half million dollars a year. Every G League player is going to be like, tuck, tuck not, and dunk. The only girl on the court is just that one from Des Moines yeah, just covered in bruises. I just don't understand how the LGBT community and like feminists and shit, they get like all behind these men. No, it's shit not all. All of them, though, this is the piece I wrote for Spectator of like how pride lasts the public. And this, there, it, the, I wrote a piece for Spectator and it um, about how pride lasts the public, basically, like a year ago. And I interviewed all these like lesbians, gay men, Douglas Murray, brilliant people. I wish I could have published every one of their interviews because they're all brilliant. And they're like, the gays aren't behind this. Yeah, you know the lesbians aren't behind it. Mm-hmm. It's it is like you said, white like young white liberal straight women who are mm-hmm. kind of cosplaying bi right now mm-hmm. will probably grow out of it eventually yeah. and end up in the suburbs like me. Like sure. we just smoked cigarettes and got tattoos. Just <laughs> don't chop your tits off. Like what? Right. Just re- revolt. Re- what revolt or like? What am I trying to rebel. say? Rebel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rebel you know, in like it, a normal way. Yeah. In some way, it's like you're willing to watch all of society burn down just so you don't have to shave your armpits. Like, dude, just fucking calm down a little bit. I don't mind know? if you don't shave. Yeah, them. like it's okay. I don't fucking care, dude. Like, I don't know why I threw that it's in. It's just like, fuck the patriarchy. <laughs> so everything that's ever happened, well, the patriarchy that built the is greatest civilization over. the world has ever known, has got to just fucking be destroyed. Because why? Because, I don't know, think it's that. Dad? I don't think it's that. So everyone talks about the patriarchy, and then you have to say, well, what would you replace it with? So are you replacing with something that's like more cohesive and like working together and symbi- symbi- symbiotic, or are you saying that the matriarchy is going to inherently be better? And like some people have that perspective, so it is like the tear it down. But I think anytime you're saying like only one polarity is supposed to be in charge, I think that's where things get in a mess. Because as much as I hate that word being overused all the time, there was a definitely a case for a lot of revision you know what I mean like there was definitely too much power in a lot of places and like women not having choices we ha- couldn't wear pants we couldn't uh, send mail when they first um, launched post like the post they were like we can't do this because the stay-at-home moms are gonna start having affairs 
and they're gonna start writing to their lovers. And, and they did. And they yeah, did. they did. Yeah, yeah they did. Right? <laughs> yeah. Some yeah. of them, yeah. But it's like there definitely was room for revision. So it's like don't knock the whole thing down. But how do you work together to make something better? But mm-hmm. it's definitely not getting rid of all the men and putting just women in place. They're also they're, they're redefining all these things constantly. Like the patriarchy was like okay, male dominated. Politics. Women can't vote. These all things, right? Mm-hmm. Now the patriarchy is, it includes capitalism. It includes Western well, it is. civilization. It is, like, that, that is masculine. Interse- but it's also it this doesn't, intersectionality. It doesn't, mean it's, it doesn't mean, so patriarchy, if you're using it the right way, I don't think it necessarily is bad. To me, when I hear that, it's just like male dominated or it's like driven with masculinity. So that doesn't, again, doesn't mean that, that that's wrong. Like you need discipline and you need goals and you need to be able to like climb and, ha- you know, constantly. And those are considered masculine yeah, things? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if you like, if you go into the more spiritual perspective of divine feminine, divine masculine, or those energies, like what a woman is, it's like that fluidity, that softness, that openness, and the man is like driven. So they say that men have to act on something to make it happen, and women tend to be more magnetic. So we actually attract things. So we don't have to work as hard technically to get things. It's more effective for us not to. Um, be so rigid it actually works against us as women and men yeah loosen up baby and then for men it works better to be disciplined (laughs) and it's like it's this weird um this weird lie that we're the same and we're supposed to achieve success the same way or see the world the same way yeah i don't think we're supposed to no we're not we're not so like the patriarchy is not bad and being a woman is not bad but it's like no right and i think that's why it's a combination of Mm -hmm. it's why we both exist it's why we raise children it's why men have certain yeah. Responsibilities. Yeah, and that, I mean, that being said, if if um, if if we just stop women voting for like two years, we can we can have a pretty we can fix this pretty good, right? Everybody agrees. I don't think no? women really vote. I just do what my husband says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, <laughs> the funny thing with the women voting thing goes back. Um, yeah, goes back we to just like, <laughs> we just get ours at our ballots at home, and yeah. I fill hers out for her. <laughs> yeah. Stay back. That's the that's my husband cool doesn't even let me see the ballot. She's so fucking hung up next to the radiator. See, you change your mind though with my household because I'm I've voted for Trump three times now because we had like to, we had to vote for him to be on the ticket in North yeah. Carolina, and my husband was in Camp RFK, and now that RFK endorsed Trump, he's looking at me and he's like, God. Damn it! All roads yeah. lead to Trump, baby. Yeah, yeah. No, I, it's I, really I, funny, actually. You're like, I was hold, withholding sex until my husband did vote for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Show me that masculinity, that toxic masculinity. Well, a joke, obviously. Women should be allowed to vote. Sorry, sisters. The, uh, but the, it does go back to um, like Greece back in the we day. We didn't think you weren't joking until right now. <laughs> And now Disclaimer. we have questions. Women, this is like when joking. I got the BLM Women can emails. also withhold sex. I can make <laughs> Not like, for long. I, I can be like, oh, honey, I'm going to withhold sex until you vote for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and then four years later. <laughs> She's like, oh, you were withholding? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> That's not true, though, either. I mean, maybe it's different points in marriage, but yeah. I would be like, I'm voting for Trump. If my husband said that for like a week, I'd be like, I'm voting for Trump. Oh, good for you. <laughs> We'll just we just stopped naturally. <laughs> Go on. What do you what do you think? See, as a single guy, I'm always fascinated by this because this is something that everybody always talks about. Like, what do you think is a long time to go in a marriage without making love to your husband? Making love, I need to get decades. Boink, you know. I, I mean, I think that I think it's different for everybody. I, but I. Uh, I know from experience that we'll just start, maybe you can confirm this too, we'll just start like sniping at each, you know, just like, there's like this, like, and I'm like, oh, we need to fuck. Mm. Like, that's what, why that's we're. Nothing makes a guy hornier than getting fucking nagged at No, it's not nagging. It's just, we'll start like, Ending you get really nagging. snippy. You get yeah. snippy with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just start like, you're short with each other. Mm. And we're not generally like that ever. And so if that's, I'm like, oh, it's been you know i think i don't we i don't i don't think you should go more than a week unless you're like just had a baby or i don't know you have some physical complication or whatever but mm. i think i think yeah anything over a week anything starts over to affect the relationship yep. and it's the one thing that like bonds you romantically <clears throat> and makes that relationship different than everything else because you deal with especially when there's kids like so much yeah there's just so much life getting thrown at you and i think that you need those moments to reconnect and be like oh we're on the same team and we're and like 
we were here first. Yeah. <laughs> before yeah. this kid. And if not, then immediately, I, at least for me, it's like we're, now we're adversaries. I feel mm-hmm. like that's not happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I was, I, I was gonna yeah. say years. years? <laughs> <laughs> My last relationship, we were like six months. Just explaining and I, a lot. Uh, we realized honestly, it was like four months before. So very I long. Like, I, don't, I don't think we should be together anymore. She four like, months. Yeah, no, I think so too. Oh, I'm like, yeah. Four months. I'm yeah, sorry. Dude, it was bad. Is it really bad. years? It was really huh? bad. Years? But no, no, not years. But you know, yeah. a week. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. you're way. I mean, you look, travel. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. No, it's hard when you travel. That's the problem. How long have you been married? Oh God, uh, nine years. Okay, yeah. I'm f- on year five, so we're not. I think it's different seasons mm-hmm. in marriage too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm 16. Yeah, you're further further down the line. Ours can drive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in Michigan, I don't know if they changed the law. She's just 16 years old. Yeah, so I think that maybe you Leave know he's traveling and travel throws it for a loop. Yeah, yep. we've been together for like 15, and there's definitely coming been back with points the carpet. where there's long stretches, especially after a baby. And I've had a lot of people say that it's like everyone's sexual drive is different. So I, mm-hmm. I just have. Like a higher one. I mean, yeah. The great thing about being married, that's funny because all these single people Some will be days like, eh. morning wood feels like a miracle. Some days. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Honey! Honey! <laughs> Honey! It's, it's working. It's happening! It's working. <laughs> I thought it was broke. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Yeah. I also am 42, so I have to urinate, and now that's taken. <laughs> <laughs> that's far more important. Not everyone has the same sex drive. I'm sorry. I mean, to, I, no, not everybody does. So how do you Our audience is getting, getting horny, and then you. Yeah, and then I wanted to ruin it. Screaming. Yeah. And I'm sorry. Like, I should oh, let you two talk. The girls were talking about sex, and the guys yeah. were like, I can't get it up for years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. You two seem to be, yeah, you, everybody's fantasizing, and I'm just over here like, that's nice. <laughs> Oh, a week, huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> a week. A week, huh? Weird. Yeah, I never go more than a week. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been in some courses, like intimacy courses and things like that, and I've had the perspective that you maybe age out of it at some yeah. point where the relationship is that's just not on the table anymore I think and your friends important. well yeah it's yeah. not for you no 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 but i yeah. was thinking like 70s or whatever and this coach was like absolutely not i'm yeah, coaching not. this 85 year old couple and they're doing it several times a week and that blew yeah. my yeah. mind really blew oh no i mind. mean that's why there's like you know you look at a lot of these old folks homes and they have they get viagra and everybody's got herpes and they have that new form of uh Syphilis? Chlamydia, yeah, there syphilis or chlamydia, yeah. whatever made it Al Capone's brain rot out and have him <laughs> fishing in his pool. Oh. But yeah, it's yeah. because they think they're at the end. But with AI, apparently, if we can make it five more years, we're all going to live to be 200. So imagine these yeah. people that thought that they were banging at 77 of the old people. And they're old. doing it now. And now they got 150 more years to live with herpes the whole time. <laughs> it's like, all oh, right. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah, it's still like, it's still important, I think, at any age. Like, you know. I, I think I think I find my wife beautiful, so it's like it is what it is. Got it. Cameras are on. Cool. I know um, it's pointing right at me. And I'm, <laughs> I'm really trying to to keep my head. Love you, baby. No, I think you do though. Like there, <laughs> if you are in a healthy relationship, I think after someone's given you a child, like there are, there's wear and tear that happens with time and things like that. But you oh, see yeah. it in a different lens, and like there's a difference between someone that's hot and someone that's beautiful. And I think there's a different level of appreciation and just. Um, I like security in a weird way like mm-hmm. it's like a, it's something deeper and less fragile than the other thing because the other mm-hmm. thing is just so vain I mm-hmm. think so I think men good men tend to see like those stretch marks or like whatever and they're like that was from that pregnancy and like that's so beautiful yeah I've never yeah I can't imagine not like caring about anything like that yeah I, I don't know it just seems very shallow yeah I think so too yeah but I do think familiarity breeds contempt and I think in my next relationship that I think I take very seriously we should each have our own rooms and our own beds some people can't sleep together yeah and I think there's like you lose a little bit of that kind of like that raw animal sexuality when it's like all right move over I gotta piss you know like it's some people love that stuff in my relationships for whatever reason probably because I'm a disgusting fucking ogre but it's just you're walking around in underwear all the time and you're not you like and you're not having sex and it's like 
when we first started, we lived in two different places every time we saw each other, just like, bam. But now we live together, and it's like, ah, oh, we can do it later, and, uh, well, you know, ah, oh, she annoyed me now, or, like, I don't know. I feel like, in some ways, that separation... And then the last one that I was in, she was she got mad. She was like, I feel like I'm always the one that has to initiate. And I'm like, well, yeah, because I, I'm always I'm always down. I'm a yes. I just need to know when you're yeah, a yes. I, I hate that too, doing yeah. that, yeah. though. I hate having to always initiate. I'll do it once in a while, but to me, like that ruins the de- like the power play of it. But the woman is... See, that's interesting, man, because like the man... She, that she would say, like, the man takes the lead. Uh, yeah. I'm like, the woman yeah. is... You're the hot one here, dude. Like It's so hard for men to see that like that, because it's like we feel... Yeah, we feel like you have to want it uh, when you're in a relationship then just be like come up and grab you and be well, like well you have to set the stage so there's all that like the foreplay that happens throughout the day like are you making sure that she's but not I'm already out? hitting her <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> sorry <laughs> doesn't she get it <laughs> I'm screaming my needs. We were at the airport. I just can't. It's my favorite episode. No, we were right, at the though. airport the other day, and like my husband like went to do like this to me in the while we were waiting for a bag. But he was like playing, yeah. and I immediately like, smacked his hand away. I was like, "What are you doing? That's just so inappropriate." And like people, like a couple of people looked, and he goes, "Oh, I forgot that you think that's sexual, so it's inappropriate." <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, he was just actually trying to kill you. <laughs> no, he was like doing it to like just in his mind, it was like a playful, sweet thing. But I, to yeah. me, I'm like, that's. Sexual, don't do that. Well, it's, it's everybody like, around so you. I was at the airport. I don't want to so sit in the pump for the next three hours. Sexual. Ev- everybody around you that just thinks you had an awful flight. <laughs> <laughs> And you're about to go home with a man who hurts you. So you're about to get hit by this marine over here that's looking at you. That's what I mean, yeah. That. Oh, long. there's so many guys waiting to be like, I'll save the day. And you're like, you just hit my husband. <laughs> he was a really nice guy, I swear. Yeah, yeah that was Fucking weird, man. I don't know. I, I think, um, I, I, you know, every time I say this, people look at me weird, but I think... Having your own room, having your own space is like really, really important. See what I do? I couldn't do that. For real, like I put on um, a CPAP mask and that just like, it drives her wild. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's like, a, I don't know if it's like, a, like a, a, a magnet, but women just start surrounding our house <laughs> when I put it on. Well, that's what yeah, I do. it's just weird. It's like, it's like a bear's when somebody's on their period. So I, it's, <laughs> they just, I walk around Miami just going up to chicks, be like, yo, what's up, baby? Even if I'm alone in a hotel and I put on my CPAP elephant mask and oh. I catch myself in the mirror, I'm like, you better touch yourself. And you guys are wondering yourself. why you're not getting more sex. <laughs> I'm is getting it, sex. It's they're not, not wondering. Much, it's not, <laughs> yeah, it's just not much consensual sex. Is the problem. It, look, IBS and a CPAP mask. You can't figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the two things women love: <laughs> diarrhea and snoring. Dave, Dave's just gone through about 20 minutes of my material, and <laughs> like my whole set is gone now. <laughs> it's dead. Sorry, I didn't mean to be crass. No, no, it's fine. I'll sit like this. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I'm pretty good for what I I look like. You're on TV. Yeah. So that helps. Yeah. There's like elevens of people see you every night. I mean, there are there are dozens of fans (laughs) in this in this world that want to see some Dave Landau. (laughs) I tell you, man. uh, What do you think of censored TV? What happened with Compound? You were on Compound for a while. You, You. Gavin McGinnis, that whole stuff. What do you think of what's going on there? Any any comment? What's going I, on there? I, I no, I, I think they're getting I mean, censored again. No, um, <laughs> they're really, really leaning into like almost oh, hard shocking right. for like hard, hard right, uh, shocking for shocking. Like Elijah Schaefer, and uh, they're growing. I mean, but it's. It's Fuentes hard to like, and I think is he on there? I think he no, I don't know if he is, but they're but like he's a the, regular. The groupers and stuff are all on there. Are you familiar with Sensor TV at all? I thought that that was the same thing as Infowars. Like I thought it was the like sister. No, that companies. was Alex Jones. Yeah. Um, but mm-hmm. no, Sensor TV is uh, Gavin McGinnis. Yeah, I don't. I can't see a face. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I don't know. I well, think they bought Compound. Compound Media was Anthony Cumia, and. Well, I think, I mean, I, the reason why I honestly I left the show was because I thought that he was going to go to South Carolina and it was going to shut down anyway. Mm-hmm. And it did. So that's oh. really why I left there. I haven't seen much of the new stuff they're doing. I, I don't know. The far right thing, it has its fan base. It just mm-hmm. seems a bit dangerous, uh, in my opinion. I mean, 
I I don't even know. I don't know like how strong a lot of their feelings are on it, but I know that anytime I did Elijah show and this is nothing against Elijah, but it's like the second I did it, I'm in media matters. Like we did a thing where they said it was legal to kill trans kids in Texas. And I was like, well, obviously I was like, I, I ran over six on my way to the studio. And like, I just made a bunch of jokes about how I'd like, a, I had a tackle box of weapons just to murder trans kids. Yeah. So like, but it, it was obviously like just mocking the idea sure. that anyone would assume that would be legal, but then they clip it out mm. and then they tell you like, they're joking about killing trans. And it's like, that's not at all what, what I'm doing. I'm, mm. I'm joking about the fact that you would be dumb enough to think that it's legal to murder someone who's a child that's trans. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I think there's so many people hunting that I can't imagine. I don't know. I, I think it's a very, I think it's a very rough way to go, but I could be wrong. Cause you think people don't, they just don't see that it's a joke. Like they don't see the obvious thing. I, I, it's not always a joke though. Yeah. You know, like, that's oh, for the thing. them. Yeah. yeah for mm -hmm. them. Like, mm -hmm. and, and Gavin has a huge following and you know, I know Gavin and it, it, there's a lot of people who see it that way, but it's definitely, it's a hard line in the sand to draw and Gavin's experienced a lot of pushback. I've watched it the whole time. I mean, mm -hmm. when the proud boys got called out, uh, which was way over the top. And then when he got in trouble for it, me, Mike Malice and Gavin were on Anthony's show and Anthony was off that day. And we we're like, you, maybe you shouldn't wear a katana or bring a katana with Asian glasses into Times Square right now. And then the next day, it was a fake one, obviously, but then the next day was like this Proud Boys carrying a weapon through Times Square in New York. Like, it, it just seems like a very dangerous road to go down. But I mean, if they're willing to, they're willing to, I guess. I just don't, I don't agree with it. Yeah, it seems there's, I think it's kind of what you were saying earlier, in an effort to be, to push back against the woke, things that have become like so anti-woke. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is just like, not like this is this is like legit racist this is well legit, yeah. yeah and it's like using comedy the overcorrection in comedy of like you there's not all criticism is wrong in saying that you're just using comedy to be cruel mm -hmm. if you're if you're just like a low-hanging fruit joke that's like a, a roast is supposed to be out of love that's not mm. you know this there's and even experiencing this myself i think it was it was something i always had to work against or be aware of was am i reacting because i'm feeling rejected like that's a very powerful force is am i reacting because i'm feeling rejected i'm feeling rejected by my comedian friends who aren't following me i'm feeling rejected by the dominant culture that i thought i was part of and then realized that i no longer am when your tribe kind of kicks you out or you realize that you're you're the people you thought were your friends weren't your friends this has happened to people all across the board since really 2015 it, i feel like in increasing ways and i see a lot of people who get like they they just go from one extreme to the other i was never an extremist mm -hmm. so it wasn't like i was some left-wing activist who became um a right-wing activist because i'm just not inherently an activist so i think you see a lot of that but it was something i had to be aware of was am I, how much of this is just me feeling rejected and reacting like being mm -hmm. reactive mm -hmm. and well it's such a good point i never considered it that way that's really interesting because it, there is a lot, especially in this business, this business is 99% rejection. As somebody that's never been rejected once in their life, rejection, how would you describe rejection to it? <laughs> how would we describe rejection? Rejection is when somebody doesn't want you. I don't know if it's you've like, ever experienced that. See, when what someone says when no and it's not at your mouth. <laughs> over and over and over again, there's a lot of rejection. Yeah. yeah. Having to what? If you pick the wrong guy over and over and oh, over yeah. again, there's I, a lot of I rejection. I mean, that's yeah. the thing people, yeah. yeah. I've, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Being but in our business, ninety nine percent of it's rejected. Like, like it's funny. You have to get used to it. Well, yeah, but then you like lash out, and I'm like, oh, I'm never playing that. I just was talking to you, you to about the club inside. the other day. I'm like, I've oh, explained fuck, I'm play that club again, and uh, <laughs> no, you just have to <laughs> just fucking sit here and go, oh, yeah. yeah. Eventually but that's very don't. interesting. How much yeah. of it now you got like all fucking inception? Like, how much of my act is just the rejection response like what the hell is going Ooh, on we here, might man? have reached a new level of oh, conscious awareness no, in I, this episode. I liked my level of self-loathing oh, that's well, interesting it's, it's true though 
Yeah, it's I old. mean, it's very like, you're spot on. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of stuff, yeah, it is just racist. I'll call it what it is. And you'd yeah. be like, I don't really want to jump in on that because I can understand a joke. There are jokes that are racist that you can laugh at. Yep. And then there's just racism where you're like, well, this isn't. You're you're using racism and disguising it as a joke, mm-hmm. as opposed sure. to mm-hmm. a joke that you just happens to be racial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the other people won't put you on, so you're like, I can have a million viewers. Like you do it, like you kind of go through it in two different ways. It's like, all right, I can have a million viewers here, but do I want those million views? And then it's like, well, I can't get a million views the other way. You know, can I go on there but and just, just be chill? And but no, then you get patched in with you these can't other do people. it for that reason. No, though. and this is how the no. algorithm trains you. You know, that it, if you, and this is again something that I learned from Twitter was if you have a tweet that goes viral for one that might get you a bunch of followers in one direction, you have to immediately read those people out because otherwise that algorithm is going, I mean, it hasn't been great for my growth or my bank account. I, (laughs) but I, I, can look in a mirror i can sleep Mm -hmm. at night Mm -hmm. i can i like my audience i know a lot of people who have chased the algorithm and all of the reaction that they were getting and can't stand their audience Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and won't and and they just have to keep going down that path now because that's the path they have chosen and it's where their money is in there so i don't know that that's that I don't know how you keep yourself honest like that because it is. I was talking to my sister about this recently because she's been a little bit red pilled, and she was like, "You know, it's weird because if the algorithm's just picking up what I like, are we all brainwashing ourselves?" I'm like, "Yes, mm-hmm. yes, we are." It's just, yeah, it's a big. Yeah. Uh, we're just it's just mm-hmm. a loop. Like we're red pilling ourselves. Loop, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. A, it's not. You have you and it. I don't think. Even as self-aware and conscious as I am, the algorithm knows me better than mm-hmm. I know my fucking self, which is crazy. So even trying to be aware and conscious and not fall prey to those things, I'm still absolutely going to fall prey to those things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it, it's it, not even if you don't know yourself, I think, it, but I, I get exactly what you're saying, but it is just feeding you. It's feeding you everything that it thinks you want. To the point where you're disconnected from everything else going on. I mean, it's a great way to keep people kind of blind, is if they can't see everything else. Because if you talk to somebody else's feed, it's like, is your whole thing rescuing dogs? My thing's rescuing <laughs> dogs. But then it gets to the point where it's like, why are there so many burned ones? I don't want to hit like. Like, I understand that he comes out good at the end, but you know, sometimes you just want to see a puppy getting well, a haircut. And there's a there's a there's a perverse profit incentive. I'm glad incentive. I made a point there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a perverse profit incentive, man, because the, uh, like, even with the, the, these pedophile catchers now, and it's a great thing, they're catching pedophiles and all this stuff, but, like, they're getting millions and millions and millions of views, and it's, like, you, some people, you better, <laughs> you better be right, you, you're putting this guy on, his entire world on camera, and if you're wrong, like, if you're wrong, and you're outing this dude as a pedophile, or even worse, when these fucking Reddit kids decide that the next swatting thing is gonna be, hey, my boy's a pedophile, go look him up, and it's, that's then you're gonna have these LA influencers like knocking down somebody's door at fucking you know where they work at Publix or some shit, and they'd be like, hey, we saw you talking with this girl on fucking no, that wasn't me. It, the vigilante it stuff's stop. not good for tens of millions of views. You know, it's a well, vigilante stuff. stuff's not good because it's uh, illegal. <laughs> really? Well, there's a lot of things that are illegal that are pretty good, buddy. Oh, no, I realize that, but I mean, yeah, you're right. But I mean, <laughs> people shouldn't be doing it. I do agree with the pedo. Like, if you have that solid evidence and you call the guy out and other people aren't doing their jobs, I think it's important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I want to be very clear. I'm not pro pedophile here. No, no, I'm All not saying, I'm saying you. Is, I'm, I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> I want to be very clear. Uh, like, All I'm saying is, as a representative of NABLA, <laughs> that we should at least be allowed to have a convention at the Holiday Inn. <laughs> All I'm saying. All I'm saying is that it should be called Maps. Yeah. <laughs> so that we can get rid of the stigma. Who was the first? I always want to know who the first person was. was like, guys, Scott I Wiener. thought of something. Le- Scott Wiener. I really? promise you really? it was. Yeah. You know who yeah. it is? Yeah. In a room of 100%? people. 100%? Well, no, I'm saying Every that, but it probably up. was him. Yeah, it probably was. Really? Really? In a room yeah. of people was like, I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That sounds so much better. Yeah. Guys, there's <laughs> no bad ideas. Like advanced maternal age. <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny. That was very Somehow funny. this is not better. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, so, I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. how, what think tanks come up with this stuff? And they're like, oh, I got a good one here. I'm always fascinated where this shit comes from. Like, who's the tip of the spear on this stuff? Scott Wiener. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know who Scott Wiener is? No. I don't he's either. A he's a California of representative. He has the perfect name State for coming up with mm-hmm. maps. And though. every messed up policy that you hear about in California, you're like, oh, big shock. They're putting tampons in the boys' bathroom. Scott Wiener. Oh, you're just going to let... What's the Romeo some- and Juliet law with the, within a gay relationship is 10 years. And like... It, because sodomy used to have a higher um, sentencing, and now somehow it doesn't because it's stigmatizing the gay community. So now, if you sodomize a minor, if as long as it's within a ten-year gap, you don't get a harsher punishment because that would be mean to the gay community. Well, so the gay community should be up in arms because that's insane. You should, oh, we don't men agree and with that. That's prisons. insane. Yeah, yeah, sorry to interrupt. No, you're fine. Yep, same thing. It's all every messed up thing you will you'll start noticing that it's always him. Yeah, leather and like the guy leashes. shouldn't be allowed near children. Yeah. Scott Weiner. Yeah. And this is the guy who he got allows... elected. Yeah, for yeah. sure. He still has a job. He's very pop he drives a lot of policy in mm-hmm. California. Holy moly. Uh, he did one with vaccines, like lowering the age of consent for vaccines. Lowering the age of consent is like, that's like a shoehorn, right? To get into something else. So he of started course. that with vaccines. I think he lowered it to 12 or 13. Wasn't he also the like kidnapping law behind that? Where it was like the state's now like a sanctuary city for trans kids. You can come. borrow one for two days well, as no, long you as you can, return well, it. Everyone kind of jokingly, cut, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice. Well, yeah. it's just so dark and evil. Why would this no, person be in charge? Evil. Yeah, look Someone up all of the bills he's pushed him. forward. Yeah. Well, well, sorry, not literally, but allegedly. You know, Joker. whatever. His name's Scott Weiner, and his whole I thing know. is about. Is he related to Anthony Weiner? I don't no. think so. Also, another guy that. Another uh, gentleman. Was, 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 why do you think. These people get elected. Like, how do these people get elected? They're narcissistic. They'll drive, they'll step on anybody's throat. They'll keep going and they're evil. And I mean, anybody who's evil and willing to hurt somebody, especially kids, it's not that hard to advance when you're a narcissist with no soul because all you do is care about yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm. I mean, that's what sucks is a lot of people that are highly successful are narcissists. Um, Please feel free to continue this conversation. <laughs> but I have to go. <laughs> All right. uh, Bridget, before you go, tell the people where they can find you, please. Oh, uh, go to where I don't even know where I'm, I'm like looking at nothing. I'm just looking <laughs> where in the middle going? distance or whatever. <laughs> Where are you going, though, Miss Support? Be I gotta go. Um, I, uh, go to just go to my YouTube. And, <laughs> Sorry. What is my YouTube? It's YouTube. <laughs> oh, you fucking idiots know how the fucking Fetacy. internet works. Go figure it out. Fetacy. We'll put it down here. Go to YouTube slash Fetacy. That's where you can find me. Get on my free email list and uh, Twitter. Yeah, Fetacy. Fetacy. Link it all Instagram. below. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having me. It was me. so nice meeting this you. We'll have to so get you fun. to North Carolina and we'll yeah. do like a girls episode. We need a girls yeah, episode. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. That's very rude. We're right Ooh. here. <laughs> uh, and I'll just sit here quietly for the next hour. Do man <laughs> stuff. Sipping my coffee. <laughs> Just put her on camera every if now and then so the guys man- have something to look at. Look at but, yeah, yeah, as I'm putting the straw in my mouth and then go back. Yeah, well, That's the yeah. one. That's all we yeah. need. The internet, do your thing. Unless I say something really stupid and then you have to explain it to me. You could also do that. Oh, yeah, that's let's true. whatever yeah. podcast this. Hey, what's something that you feel really strongly about that I could degrade you for believing You know it? what's interesting about that is they recently had this girl on. I'm not going to say her name. I don't even know her name to say it, but she's really popular in the comedy scene. And you know who this is. Um says like a lot of things where we were kind of talking about using comedy as an excuse to say like hateful, racist, like just mean things, right? It's almost using comedy as a license to be a terrible person. Yeah. And that's kind of this person's entire thing. They have her on, but because she has the correct red pill talking points, Mm -hmm. like she's the good person in this argument and like this quote debate. And it's really not a debate with these poor girls. And then you have all these e-girls and they're kind of being cast off as like the thing that's ruining society. And I'm like... I don't know where we got to a point where sex, pleasure, enjoyment, the female body was worse for society than like actual hate, racism, violence, all of these things. But somehow it's got millions of views and that's just something that's kind of constantly perpetuated. So when you go into like the hard right 
um, rooms or like communities or whatever, you'll have, and I love the military, this isn't a knock on the military, but like you have such a wide acceptance for military and violence and you have such an acceptance for, um, I made another example, it's escaping me. Dumb broads, am I right, bro? No, but yeah, I know, see, I need need my notes. No, but it's all of these (laughs) things that we're so quick to say are better than something that is just enjoyable and isn't actually hurting anyone because we have such a shame attached to it still like your um catholic bit is yeah. perfect because that it's so true it's puritanical yeah that's the problem is in our society we are very puritanical even if we want to admit it or not and the reason why i the ideas of perversions come out of that is because it's shame mm-hmm. i mean that's why i think you see more of that in america than you do see in places like i don't know like let's just say you go to Amsterdam or mm-hmm. something like there's a reason why if something's not shamed it's it's not it's the same as like if you have a kid who can drink wine when he's young the alcoholic rate you know alcoholism rate when they're older isn't as severe as it is in America where now people are dropping dead in their 30s and 40s of cirrhosis like never before it's like 70 percent higher than it was 10 years What's ago cirrhosis uh it's when your liver rots away from oh, alcohol okay. abuse and okay. basically essentially your body turns yellow jaundice and you die it's it's just basically an infection of your liver that's caused not always but usually by alcoholic uh hepatitis alcoholism that sort of thing mm. the other examples i had were fighters right because ufc and the pfl is huge right now so another example right. of violence and then gambling is also cool so it's funny because in north carolina it was within weeks of banning all of the tube sites and requiring a vpn to get around it they introduced gambling online yes. i was like this is insane Hilarious. are we going to pretend that the other one doesn't destroy lives mm-hmm. the, gambling is the worst thing that we can do to our society it's going to destroy it we're watching it get destroyed i mean i absolutely am disgusted by the number of casinos that they put into towns into towns where you have poverty already and then you put in this thinking that they're going to be wealthy off of it then you have every single sports betting site there's a reason why it was fine in atlantic city and it was fine in vegas there was something to it or you play cards whatever it was this complete gambling now there's more people who spend money on sports booking than they do on investing whoa and that brings us to this episode sponsor betus.com <laughs> go to betus.com and use code s and for 20 percent off of your first deposit <laughs> uh I don't Use know if they're gonna S&T, like that. Uh, and, and join our join our daily fantasy <laughs> leagues. <laughs> well, that's for Gerard versus Evil. Um, not that, not that they're bad. <laughs> Listen, they're somebody's gonna take your money, society. guys. Somebody's gonna take your money. Let BetUS take your money because you know they give some of it to us. Look, so you know, if you, good. If some of you can gamble responsibly. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go out there and enjoy yourself. Uh, dude, I actually agree with you. I, I think, um, especially as a former athlete, th- th- it's already happening. The rigging stuff is already happening. It's already happening at lower levels. It's like rampant across Europe. Um, the lower levels of soccer in Europe, like there's these major levels. I don't know if you guys know how European soccer works. I know you're sports. a big sports fan. But there's like minor league levels, but the teams can go up into the big leagues. And there's so many like old Russian oligarch oil people and they're like there's so many of these basically mobsters that they buy these teams and they're like oh I want my team in the in the first division and the other teams are just like well we can make that happen buddy Mm -hmm. and they just rig these games like entire seasons and it's like you know if you look at what happens over there then for whatever reason it's not widely reported probably because there's so much money involved in it but like referees go missing players' families get kidnapped. It's fucking wild. Well, and people are being thrown out here, you know, for just, uh, you know, sports betting just on them, on themselves or in college and that sort of thing. Like, it's it's everywhere now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's becoming something that everybody is abusing because it's designed to be insanely addictive. It's not even just a casino, which is designed to be insanely addictive. And if it's the legality of a casino is it has to pay out 80% to 90% back yeah. of what it takes, it doesn't. Anybody who's been to a casino knows that it doesn't. Yeah. So it's like you're constantly being 
screwed by these people, and who's going to stop you? The government who's collecting all the taxes yeah, from that right. money? Mm -hmm. They're allowed to rob you. It is a license to tax and rob the public yeah. in every single state, and it's disgusting. And it's basically they just go, well, we saw Native American casinos get built and keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger because they were allowed to do it on their land. It's like, well, how do we tax that and take that money then? Let's put it on our land, let's make it legal, and let's drain everybody. And, yeah, and people think they're going to beat the casino. Like, one of the best uh, lines from an old mobster I knew was, uh, you know, you know, when a guy would be like, I got a system. He'd be like, oh, yeah? How big's your house? Is the casino bigger than your house? Their system's better than your system. Yep. You're never going to beat them. And the thing is, if you actually do beat them, do you know what they start doing? They um, blacklist you. They can't, ban you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you win, mm -hmm. they're like, you must be cheating. Yeah. That happened to uh, Dana White. And then he, he got kicked out of a couple casinos, so then he pulled the UFC, the right for them to um, fight, show, show the fights. And then he, I think one of them was supposed to be hosting a fight, and he pulled it. Really? He's like, fuck you. Good for yeah. him. I didn't yeah. know that. Interesting. Yeah. Good for him. But I mean, that's the argument against, but, that's the argument against porn, and, and also, like, why isn't... Uh, why, what's the argument? Well, the, the fact that impulse control. The, the the argument against well definitely uh, prostitution and some people tie it to porn is that there is no impulse control the gambler the alcoholic this person will just spend every dollar they have on buying this pleasure on buying this uh, I mean it's dopamine right I mean at the end of the day and there's people that want to destroy themselves there's this weird self destructive mentality I know guys that win tens of thousands of dollars. They'll win fifty thousand dollars on a weekend of football betting, and bet a hundred thousand on Monday night just to feel the loss. Mm, yeah, but well, that's part of it. That's the up and down. That's the dopamine hit that you're addicted to, and you, you're addicted to losing. That's what people mm -hmm. don't understand about gambling. It's mm -hmm. it's it's the whip. It's the sub dom thing. Yeah, it, it's it, that's what you're addicted to, and that's what's so scary about it. Yeah, is that you're addicted to losing, and you're addicted to giving up everything that you have. In some ways, I bet that is what Bill Clinton's thing was. Because right, he wasn't going after like the most attractive women on earth. In some ways, mm -hmm. it was like, I want to get caught and I want to see if I can get away with it. Because he did it so many times. Like, there's, mm -hmm. I think that there's like when, you, when you're always winning and when things are always so easy, some of these guys, they have this self destructive impulse of like, all right, let me set this trap and see if I can get out of it. We're gonna, you know, we're going to turn the Oval Office into an escape room. You know, that's just my theory anyway on it. I, th I think there's a lot of people that. And, and again, my time in minor league baseball kind of informs this, where some guys, especially with the guys that thought they weren't going to make it, they start picking up an addiction or they start picking up alcoholism or they mm -hmm. start cheating on their wife. And maybe it's a stress reaction, but also I just think there's something like giving myself an out. Like it's very, very hard to say, man, I just wasn't good enough. It's easy to be like, oh, if I had just stopped drinking or, oh, man, if I never did drugs. Mm. And then people are like, oh, you were still good, but you had this thing. And it makes you a victim in some ways. Whereas if you're just not good enough, you're not a victim. You're, you're, just, you're just not good enough. Man. Yeah, but yeah, sure, that definitely exists. But I always say that it's not the government's job to help you figure that out, right? Like if it's um, impulse control or whatever it might be, that's for you to sort out. And there's always going to be something else. If you take away the thing that's like their first choice, there's going to be a second, third, fourth, and fifth, right? They're not going to stop because it's a personality thing. Well, and to take away porn and then replace it with with gambling, gambling is, is absurd. Insane. Yeah, it makes no sense whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And that's up to people who can sit there and say, okay, well, that's wrong. It's like, okay, well, biblically, if you want to break it down, then you can look at gambling in the sense of, okay, don't do that. There, and people say there's nothing that says don't gamble necessarily in the Bible. But there is plenty of things that say, you know, like this person loses so you can win. That's the entire thing. Yeah, no usury. And then there's literally a prostitute, or at least, you know, who, what we're supposed to believe is a prostitute, where he's just like, yeah, you know, don't do that. You're, you know, you're better than that. It's not, but, you know, you're fine. It's okay. Come be my wife. You know, yeah. And realistically, that's, it, it's not, we shame that so much harder than something that's very much defined as the sin of greed, the deadly sin of greed. Mm -hmm. And it, to people with gambling, that's greed in its highest form going against desperation and when desperation is all you have left is to co start coming back because you're trying to get your money back because you've lost everything because now you've hit bottom and you realize your life has value but you can't because the greed is just the thing that controls all of it that's why we're losing as a society we're so misplaced in what's important right now that we all have to lose everything to even feel 
what was once important. Mm. And I think for a lot of people that is not everybody, mm -hmm. but I think that's, that's the problem is where to replace something like that or to demonize one thing just to bring out the other. It's, it's and as an addict, it's like, okay, well you can't do alcohol anymore. Here's some, here's some crack, here's some whatever. <laughs> it's, it's one after the other, after the other, after the other. And they know dopamine hits. They are designed at like casino, like a slot machine now. It's not a slot machine from 15 years ago that you saw that you throw some quarters in. It's this giant 3D thing that's designed to trap you and make it so you're a zombie and you just put in everything until you're done. And any time you get a hit that's higher, it's designed to make you want to get rid of it. That's evil. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think as, a, as a society that is so puritanical, we have to realize what our priorities are and what your priorities are as a person. And I mean, you're right, you may be looking for an excuse to get out by doing it, but I think a lot of the times is everybody wants escape from life, mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. And when you hand somebody something that can be that detrimental, as opposed to just going to a movie, that's when, you see, that's when I think you start seeing all the anger and the hate and the things that we're seeing now. Yeah, it's a spiral. Yeah, absolutely it is. But where does, to your point, where does regulation come in? To this should i move to the middle where does uh like where does what is the government's <laughs> role in this i think you just keep it transparent and safe i think that's kind of the limitation Sorry. for me like i think transparent and safe right it's not to tell you what is allowed what's not allowed as long as it's not hurting other people so i think one of the biggest issues with the porn industry is that there is no real regulation because no one wants to look at it cuz that makes them feel yucky so it's like instead of that if you remove the shame and can you you can look at the thing objectively as hard as that is for a lot of people well now you can actually fix a lot of the problems and make it safer so all of these people that are trying to make it illegal or or they say that they're just trying to make it a change but like really they're trying to just make it illegal if you're trying to actually protect vulnerable women and children you would institution you would make in, uh, make regulations that would make the entire industry safer mm -hmm. right so you would have into you have intimacy coaches for regular film but you don't have them on porn that makes no sense mm -hmm. whatsoever um, the testing is a little bit dodgy because there's different testing for the gay industry versus the hetero industry and they're allowed to cross over that doesn't make sense so if you can take your own personal shit out of it then you can actually make it safer for everyone else I brought up the point that um, because we don't respect it or treat it seriously that when there are copyright infringements and then all of these tube sites that are stealing content and then anyone can load stuff, you don't know what's actual abuse material versus what is licensed, belongs to a person, belongs to a company. So if you just had like these simple things that you require of mainstream for adult, you would actually be saving a lot of people. That's the drug decriminalization argument, right? Like if you decriminalize drugs, then you can standardize them. People can grow them. They can be tested. It's, you know, that... And there's a lot... There's a, there's a solid argument to be had about that. And it, it's kind of... I, I don't believe in laws that people don't adhere to, right? The public, or at least there used to be, the public... These people were servants of the public. And mm -hmm. they were supposed to do what the public wanted. Now that's called populism, and it's anti-democracy somehow. The thing is happening... But the law is against it. Speed limits. 65 miles an hour. Everybody knows that means drive 75. Well, then the, the speed limit's not 65. You know what I'm saying? Then when you pull me over for going 66, I'm going to lose my shit. And they're like, well, you broke the speed limit. And I was like, did I, though? Everybody fucking else did. And then that's where that, that harsh in, you know, interaction comes, man. Selling weed. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's illegal. Is it, though? Everybody I know smokes weed. Like, I don't. But... Yeah, that one still is wild that there's some states that if you just have a joint on, you can go to jail. That makes no sense to and me. And a oh, billion and, yeah. people a day, or the billions of people watch porn. A hundred, and for Pornhub specifically, it's 115 million people a day. A day. A day. That's but no one watches it. as much it. as my site. You've <laughs> 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 been really busy. <laughs> oh, you bet. <laughs> after it, uh, which, speaking of, no, but, congratulations on 100,000 followers, man. That's a real big oh, thing. Oh, on uh, YouTube? On Thank YouTube, you. Man. Yes. Especially yes. with the content. They, they cannot, you are not algorithm-friendly content. Not at that's all. Like, no, yeah. That's great. But yeah, it, yeah, in a year, it wasn't too bad. That's awesome. I, you man. know, so yeah, I'm 
excited about that. At least it's uh, showing that it's going in a positive direction. Oh, hell yeah, bro. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I don't know, though. They, they're definitely not showing us to a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> that's 100,000 people searching you out specifically. It seems that way, yes. Yeah, that's awesome, yeah. man. That's yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean... Uh, how, you've been a guest on Normal World two times? Twice, yeah. Nice. We'd like you back. Anytime. Yes. Very cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, ske- what's the sketch about the situation? You guys doing more sketches? Well, no, what? we need to. Sketch. We've done a yeah, couple of them. Yeah, for that, too. Yeah, yeah. that's what I wanted to do. did a great job as AOP. Yeah, did. I didn't have a lot. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. It, it worked, The one you did, you nailed it. Well, we have uh, Derek Richards now playing Tim Walls. That's phenomenal. So that's what we're working on for a Halloween episode. Something about that guy freaks me out. His man. own brother just came Something out and was that guy. like, it's don't. Just, it's too fake. It's too, it's too much. So what's your intuition? You've got the best intuition maybe of anybody I've ever met. What's your intuition on Tim Waltz? Um, that's the guy running with Kamala, right? That's right. Yes. Um, it's interesting. I guess he's like super pro-abortion. Like that's like one of his main things. Like he all the way, which is kind of a red flag to me because like, I think that's kind of evil when you're like, there are no limits. I'm like, well, it's a, it's about to come out. Free it's like, it's out coming out. Um, so that's you crazy. See that? What they were giving out free abortions at to the me DNC? that is yeah, so van. absurd. <laughs> that is so upside so down. True. Because here's the thing: no matter where you stand on like pro life, pro choice, if you want to call that, I say mm-hmm. it's pro abortion because that's what it is. Um, it these women a lot of times that have the procedure done are not okay after like there's a huge grieving process they go through like this really deep darkness you have a freaking like trailer that you're doing it in are you also providing the aftercare and mental health care after the fact are you following up with them is there any integration because to me that is wildly irresponsible and the hormonal shift to bring it full circle because you didn't even yeah and the hormones because you didn't even these women didn't make an appointment like they showed up maybe they're in a vulnerable space and because it's so accessible we talk about like the problem with accessibility, especially when it comes to porn. What, the, what about the problem to accessibility to a trailer where you're, they're going to just get rid of your baby because you're in a bad spot, mm. right? So to me, that was like wildly reckless. No matter where you stand on the decision, like that was just, uh, that was insane. It was insane. Yeah, but the, yeah. But the dead pre- predominantly vote Democrat though, so, you know. Got to get a few more. And the thing, too, voters. with that topic that I don't understand is if you ask most of the women that are really um, like that decides their vote, it's you ask them if they've ever had one. Most of them say no. If you ask if they ever intend on having one or if there's like a situation where they would see it, most of them will say no. Mm-hmm. So they say yes, and they're defending something that they don't even want themselves because someone else might need slash want it. But it's like, well, who is this other person? Because everyone I talk to, it's like, no, 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 no. But for someone else, yes. So either they're lying when they say like they wouldn't, which is totally possible, or they're defending something that is like really not that important and there's other pressing issues that I think everyone needs to be paying attention to. Well, that's the point of it that I don't get is how that became the only thing that matters to 60% of the voters in America. It's a weird thing to obsess over. Well, because it's, it, it doesn't really, I mean, it does matter to a lot of people. But in the long run, when it comes to voting, it doesn't, it's a distraction. Yeah, I agree. That's all they need it. They, mm-hmm. they just need to put out there, okay, it's abortion, it's this, it's that. Yeah. It's uh, this guy wants them to be, say you can hack him apart at nine months pregnancy, this mm-hmm. person. And it's easy. It's talking points. It's simple. Yeah. It's why Kamala the other night uh, at the DNC, you know, we were watching it and it's like she did a great job because she didn't talk about any plan she has for the future she didn't have to answer for any of her history she didn't have to say any policy anything Mm -hmm. that's the best way to do it but you have a room of people clapping when you've said nothing and there's no plan going forward she's the reform candidate to an administration she is currently in Right. I've never seen any, like... like you're saying, I'm going to change, you know, once I'm in office, it's like you're in office. Mm -hmm. Right now. It's insane. You haven't done... (laughs) And these people are just like, joy. It makes me actually (laughs) angry. It makes me angry. Sorry, the joy thing is hysterical to me. There's joy, and you're like, there's not, though. What are you talking about? It's terrible. You guys are just like, you guys are the least joyful humans. You guys tried to make comedy illegal. Yeah. Now they're trying to retcon themselves. We're the joy people. It's like, What? Mumford and Sons broke up because one guy didn't yeah. think like the others. Yeah, you made a banjo player sad. <laughs> <laughs> like, what kind of a monster? Like, group of people. Like, he couldn't perform. The on- Like, the only guy who does it besides Steve Martin <laughs> is because all of you threatened to kill his family. Yeah. <laughs> because he had... Oh, by the way, because he said he read a book. Yeah, he posted a book. Yeah, he read a book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was his, his, his horrible sin. 
Mm-hmm. And it was a Thomas Sowell book, wasn't it? Yeah. So it's a black author, but right. it's like the wrong kind of black. Right. It's yeah. just, but yeah, they want to look at it as like an Uncle Tom as opposed to somebody who's a free thinker. And, mm-hmm. and again, that's what books are for. It's your choice to take what you want from them. Getting mm-hmm. somebody else's opinion. People didn't read, a lot of people read Mein Kampf. It wasn't because they were trying to get the recipe. <laughs> you know, it's because they wanted to see like what this was about. Yeah. You know, scholars. Mm-hmm. There's a reason it exists. But I think that's why it's brought up so much. And And for me, I find it very strange for any guy to run around with this zero abortion policy it's insane to me as i think it's insane for somebody else to run around like there's no limits to this whatsoever it's mm-hmm. it's not mm-hmm. and i've gotten in a lot of sh- shit on conservative podcasts but it's like you're going to tell me that somebody has to keep a rape baby and i've won an argument on that but the it's the reality Probably close of your job eh? like, well close <laughs> uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah but the reality is is like okay you, the whole idea is to defend this person that's all of a sudden inside them that they didn't necessarily want and what that takes. It's like, well, what about that person? This wasn't a person who that had happened to them, mm-hmm. who they had to deal with this, and now you want them to carry it out? And my whole argument was I know a woman who had a, a baby who was brutally raped and didn't have the choice, but raised the child doesn't know. You know, and I think that's wonderful. It's a poster a poster child for why you could keep the baby. Mm-hmm. But you know what? She would have liked to have the choice. And that matters more to me that she has that choice than it does that somebody else can just win an election by saying that they're for something. Mm-hmm. When really at the end of the day, you can't control it. And people talk about it like, oh, you think there'll be back alley abortions, there'll be this, though. Yes, there will be. And then you go, well, it's only 0.01% of all of them. Okay, well, how many people is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, it's no longer about the individual. It's like, so you're still willing to kill off this many people for your opinion to supposedly save this many people. And I, and I know it might sound confusing, but that's because the whole thing is confusing. Well, no, it's the ultimate Kafka trap. There's no winning it. I, like, there's arguments to be made on both sides. And I'm like, oh, good point. No, oh, good point. And it is. It's, it's kind of like the absolutist of it. Well, it's murder. Uh, versus like you know the baby is victimless here the baby didn't do anything to you and i'm like "Ah, yeah i i kind of see it both ways man but even when it's a a, a, you're talking about a troubled pregnancy that they know is a high percentile of killing the mother and now you're saying that they can't do anything about that well i don't think that's in any state i think that's not true is that not true? Yeah. I hope it's not. No, that's like that's a talking point to scare people, but there's never been like a point where there was like an ectopic pre- pregnancy or one that was gonna um, risk the mo- Is mother's that true? life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. Then I yeah, yeah. I've only heard it as a talking point. Mm-hmm. So like I said, I I hear stuff from both sides so much being on a news show that I, I it's hard to decipher what's real no, or not. No, yeah, yeah. That one if it's medical reasons that's legal. And absolutely everywhere. should be. It should be for yeah, sure. Yeah, and I'm glad that is. Yeah. Well, we're almost at two hours. All right, let's wrap, let's wrap her up. Do you want to um, like pitch away, like where people can follow you, support oh, you? Uh, you can watch my show Normal World on YouTube or Blaze TV. Subscribe using the code Normal. You can get a heck of a discount. Uh, it's brought to you by. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So, no, I'm just, out of all the things we're gonna bleep out in this episode, that's gonna be the I know, one, that's gonna that, be the has one that has to go. Out. I didn't know you had a gambling sponsor. I apologize. No, I don't give a shit. Um, also, you can check out. They know who I am. Yeah, can, they made yeah. their decision. Right, they made a choice. <laughs> uh, I, I personally don't have a gambling sponsor. It's just my morals. But um, <laughs> you can also go to <laughs> DaveLandau.com. You can see me at upcoming tour dates. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's about it. I don't really have much more to promote than that. Dave, you are the man. Thank you so much for taking some for time, man. Oh, thank you for uh, having yeah, really And thanks please. for letting us come see you yesterday. It was so fun. Oh, you guys were yeah. awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for coming. Yeah. Yeah, and Bridget was great. We love you, Bridget. Thank you. Yeah, you were thank really you, cool. Bridge. Uh, make sure you follow these folks, man. And uh, thanks for uh, this this cool studio we have here in Austin on the road. The chatting with Candace Gerard versus Michael Scissorsode. Yeah. Uh, Cut it stuff. where I say something and Bridget just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, editors. You got, you got it, Don. There we go, bro. All right, guys. Peace. Bye. See you next time.